Welcome to another edition of our series, History from St. Paul's, from St. Paul's Church National Historic Site in Mount Vernon, New York, shown here in these photos of the 18th century stone and brick church and surrounding gravestones of the historic cemetery. Today, we explore the interesting story behind a modest rectangular granite tablet affixed to a wall in the belfry of St. Paul's, which is shown here. It commemorates the contribution of Sarah Delano Roosevelt, mother of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, to the 20th century restoration of the interior of the church to its original appearance. Mrs. Roosevelt's involvement in the campaign to restore the sanctuary was facilitated through favorable circumstances. She lived in Hyde Park, New York, which is located only 70 miles north of Mount Vernon. St. Paul's, founded in the 17th century, was a venerable Episcopal parish, the Protestant faith shared by the Roosevelt family, represented by the 19th century drawing of the church and adjoining cemetery, which is shown here. Of equal importance were the interwoven themes of family, heritage, preservation, and history. The family connection came through both sides. Anne Hutchinson, the bold Puritan religious rebel who lived nearby in the 1640s, captured in this photo of a green sign with white lettering alongside a highway with many modern cars visible, was a direct ancestor of Sarah Roosevelt. Mrs. Hutchinson's story had particular appeal for Franklin Roosevelt, who spoke with reverence about his enigmatic forebear while visiting St. Paul's. Additionally, one of the 18th century worshippers, Jacobus Roosevelt, was a distant relative of the Hyde Park family, represented by this photo of the wooden nameplate on the gray pew in the restored church where Jacobus and family sat in the late 18th century. Another important factor was the popular colonial revival movement of the 1920s and 1930s. As a cultural development, it esteemed early American history and the colonial settlers. The colonial rivalry movement was highlighted by the creation of Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia, which was also designed to maintain the struggling Bruton Episcopal Parish Church located on the grounds of Williamsburg. The St. Paul's undertaking was presented as an extension of that approach to historic preservation, appealing to Mrs. Roosevelt, who was descended from Pilgrim Mayflower passengers. The architectural firm that had completed the Bruton project, captured in this photo of the church interior, with high wall box pews, a balcony, chandelier, and Christian symbolism, was actually hired to restore the sanctuary at St. Paul's Church. The recognition of the time of St. Paul's as a shrine to the Bill of Rights, anchored in the great election of 1733 here, an early reflection of the significance of freedom of the press and religion, generated interest and support among many people, including the Roosevelts. Sarah was 76 years old in June 1931 when then-Governor Franklin Roosevelt's keynote address at a Descendants Day program at St. Paul's launched the campaign to restore the church to its original interior appearance, represented by this New York Times clip showing the governor speaking that day from a platform with other dignitaries and flag bunting visible. As an outgrowth of that well-attended event, Mrs. Roosevelt accepted an honorary title as chairman of the Restoration Committee. Over the next 10 years, her responsibilities for the initiative varied in consistency and application. Certainly at the time, she was an active participant in several other simultaneous charitable activities. For the St. Paul's project, Sarah signed letters addressed to potential donors, which had been typed up by the minister's wife, Anna Weigel, who traveled to Hyde Park with her daughter for afternoon tea. In the final stages of the campaign, Months before her death on September 7, 1941, the president's mother hosted a St. Paul's fundraising theater townhouse on Manhattan's east side. Captured in this photo of Mrs. Weigel, dressed in colonial clothes, and Mrs. Roosevelt in a dark dress, both seated and holding teacups. But Sarah's contribution was ultimately decisive because her name and public identification with the project opened doors to circles of wealthy and influential people. This lent the initiative enormous prestige and exposure. Mrs. Roosevelt was responsible for approximately half of the $40,000, about $600,000 in today's money, collected for the project. The concurrence of her death and the construction phase of the restoration from early 1941 through the spring of 1942 was the reason behind commemorating her through the granite tablet. 
friends of Mrs. Roosevelt, including the St. Paul's minister, Reverend Harold Weigel, designed the unassuming yet elegant tablet. Dedication of the memorial to the president's recently deceased mother, coupled with the completion of an enterprise that FDR had followed since its inception, generated overflow attendance with national political leaders, as well as live radio coverage and newspaper accounts. It was also December 6, 1942, a year after the attack on Pearl Harbor and the specter of the World War suffused the afternoon event. Under Secretary of State Sumner Wells, keynote speaker that day, advanced his call for a post-war United Nations to achieve the future of a world in which all peoples may be free. The president was understandably consumed with critical military and diplomatic obligations, but through a letter read aloud in the restored church, he recalled that his mother was deeply interested in the work carried on through St. Paul's and in the preservation of the venerable fabric as a shrine of real historic significance, represented by these photos of typed letters. The inscription on the beveled granite plaque, 34 inches by 45 inches, shown here, which remains in its original location, illustrates the gratitude extended to the president's mother for the restoration. It is cited as a monument to God and a shrine to the Bill of Rights, but accomplished through the untiring efforts of Sarah Delano Roosevelt. Set in a church under the rector's influence, the tablet's concluding line is drawn from the New Testament. That also which this woman had done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Please join us again next time for another edition of History from St. Paul's.